All right, we are live. What's up, everyone? Um, I'm here with a special guest, Matt Pavich. Matt? Hey, guys. How are you? Hello, good, sir. Um, we're just getting situated right now. I see we got Tom R. is always the first one in the chat. Hey, Tom R. Wes Jolly, good to see you. Uh, George Kaplan asks, what magic awaits? Um, good magic. The best magic. <laughs> not dark magic. Whiskey good magic. Um, Scotching Poetic is here as well. Good to see you all. Um, yeah, so Whiskey Throttle, of course, it's really kind of the, uh, the hardcore whiskey crew is all, is all in time. on, guys. It's funny. So we're here, uh, obviously, as you guys know by the title, this is the live November outturn tasting from the Scotch Malt, excuse me, the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society of America. I feel like I've been saying that a thousand times today and I still <laughs> <laughs> um, So it's, it's funny. So we're releasing this outturn, as you guys know, tomorrow. Uh, pretty exciting because we, we've entered this whiskey weather. Like, I feel like November is quintessential whiskey season. If you yeah, will. yeah. Um, so we, we've we've stacked up some amazing whiskeys that I'm excited to, to share. But funny enough, like we have right now going on, I just realized in New York and Los Angeles we have two events taking place, um, kind of previewing these whiskeys. So a lot of people right now are are, are drinking these whiskeys in this very moment. Cross country event. It's a cross country event. Um, so hey guys, so. I don't know if anybody knows Matt yet. Matt, you're kind of, I don't know if your face is really out in front of your work, but uh, yeah. you want to introduce just yourself and, and kind of, what, I guess, what it is you do in this whiskey world? Yeah, sure. So um, as Ben mentioned, my name is Matt Pavich. I'm actually uh, better known to the community perhaps as, um, as Thane McDram, one third of the Axis of Whiskey. Uh, several years ago, Baldo Oaksdave and I uh, having recently come to a certain point in our lives where we had sort of moved careers, we were um, thinking of what the next thing was. And as a lark, Baldo suggested that we should, as people who enjoy whiskey and who enjoy writing about whiskey and who enjoy talking about whiskey and taking photos of stuff, should do an Instagram account. And we figured we'd top out at like 100 followers and, and it would be fun. Um, and it has been super fun. So the Axis is now uh, doing far better than we thought it would. We've um, been lucky enough to add uh, our friend JT Rickhouse. Some of you may know him as Jason Sullivan. Um, they're, and, nicknames. Uh, they're all nicknames, right? Yeah, they're all nicknames. They're, they're all nicknames. We, we, early on, because Baldo and I had both come from, uh, we both come from a labor background, like a union labor background. We, we were a little, probably overly concerned about what it would be like if two labor union um, guys were seen drinking high-end whiskey. Um, we figured our the whiskey, the, the labor guys we represented might not be hugely into that. As it turns out, they like better whiskey than I do. So, um, there we are. So yeah, uh, I'm, I'm writing, I'm doing some voiceover stuff, and uh, and then um, you know the best the best part of the day, except for the kids, is the whiskey stuff. Yeah, so access to whiskey. I mean, if you guys, if it wasn't clear, so it's it's a you have a website as well, right? It's we obviously huge, huge, on, it's huge on Instagram. Yeah. Access to whiskey uh, on Instagram, we're access to whiskey on Twitter, we're access to whiskey. Although we're rarely on Twitter these days, and we're also we have a Facebook page that I think is collecting dust. But uh, <laughs> yeah, we're also we're also uh, access to whiskey on, on, on Facebook. You can find us there. Um, a lot of reviews, hopefully some good photographs. Uh, we try not to take ourselves too seriously. Um, and Ben, as you know, I'm also, uh, I've been a member now for some time of the Single Malt Whiskey Society. The Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. The Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. Both Sorry. humble yeah. on the name of it tonight, but it'd be helpful if I got the name right. Um, yeah, so it's uh, it's a glorious, a glorious place. My father-in-law actually was one of the first ones to get me into whiskey. And he was an early member of the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society way, way, way back when. He's got bottles that date back to the early 80s. Um, so when he'd heard that I joined, he was very proud. So you were out there, I know. We were talking about a few months ago. You went out to Edinburgh, went to the vaults? Yeah, I went to the vaults. Um, I think it was Andrew that I met. Oh, Andrew Park, who was the yeah. Andrew. Was, Andrew was great. Um, a, I highly recommend joining the society. I also recommend if you get a chance to to go to any talk or any, uh, just if you have a chance to meet Andrew, highly highly recommend it. He's a he's a fount of knowledge and he's a lot of fun. Um, and the vaults were amazing. Uh, it wasn't just the tasting room itself, which is stately and lovely and gorgeous, 
but the selection and the breadth of history in that room that you get to drink was spectacular. Yeah. Did you yeah. meet people like other, you know, like other members kind of hanging around? There were there were a lot of other members. Um, that day was mostly just trying to get to know Andrew a little bit, try to get around the vaults because I've never, you know, I've been a member for a while, but I've never actually been in the vaults. Um, so for me, it was sort of like geek time, going just you know, splash around like, oh yep. man, I'm finally here. Uh, but yeah, there are a lot of members. They have a, a great lunch, as it turns out. I'm going there end of the week, so I'm looking forward to having lunch there Saturday or, or are Friday. Going, are you really? You're going there this week? Yeah, yeah, Thursday. I leave for Thursday. You're so you're in Edinburgh often. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, certainly every couple of months. Um, there's some family stuff that I take care of uh, over there, and. And you know, any chance I get to go to Edinburgh is, is one I'm not going to pass up. Yeah. So Whiskey Throttle says he was there at the vaults and Kaleidoscope in October, and it was awesome. Yeah, we must miss each other. I was actually there a few weeks before that, kind of mid September. But um, there are two mem. So if you guys don't know, so the society has two uh, members' rooms, really kind of these big venues. The vaults is one we're referring to, which is you know the image that's on every bottle. It's this historic building, and that's uh, the members only club. And then we have just on the street, a couple miles is our Queen Street venue. And that's more of like a modern, um, just kind of more intimate type of type of vibe, if you will. And I think they're, they're both definitely worth checking out. The, the Queen Street venue also has a bar that's open to non-members, just to the public. So you can you can come in and kind of get a feel for Society Whiskey. It also, the restaurant, I mean, it, it both I think is great, but the Queen Street uh, restaurant just won best restaurant in Scotland this past year. And so wow. they do amazing <laughs> with whiskey, like food pairing. Um, that's just kind so, of I think I'll have to go to the Queen Street one. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, check it, check what. Yeah, definitely. And Big Al is the guy. He's the, who's there. He's super knowledgeable. He's all over YouTube too. But um, anyway, I, I feel like we can just continue this conversation. <laughs> but everybody's here for whiskey. We got we got a lot of people watching right now. Yeah, guys, let's talk whiskey. So here's what we do, we're gonna do. So I, I have five. Well, I should say six. So five of these. Um, I'm going to announce. Uh, Matt, I gave Matt these samples, and they're just numbered one through six. Uh, I'll introduce the first five and we'll taste them together. And really the point of this tasting is obviously, listen, I work for the society and so um, it can seem like I'm a bit biased, but really the, the whole purpose of this YouTube initiative is just to have honest opinions, these whiskeys. I mean, like by definition, everything I think is really good. You know, it's blind taste test, it's the buyer tasting panel before bottling. Um, if it's made it into a society bottle, I think we take a lot of pride in the fact that it's gonna be really good. But it's more about just finding things that are unique and I think to everybody's own unique palettes. So uh, that's what we'll do with the first five. So the sixth one, uh, I, I asked Matt if he was cool with this, but uh, I'm not gonna tell him what it, what it is. I'm gonna kind of put it on him to try to guess maybe the region or you know style, or he, he, you wanna even guess the distillery, Matt, you're, you're, that's really cool, but maybe the age. Uh, totally just kind of see if you can guess the sixth one blind. Um, and I'm not gonna say anything about else about that so cool you're yeah, cool okay. Okay. but uh, just just for the you know for, before we get to that i mean just the idea is is it's just to have fun with it i think we do a lot of blind tastings now at our events around the country and it's kind of just funny to see when people taste things blind we don't show them the label um you just end up just you really drop any prejudice about a particular whiskey or what you think it would be you know like an, and so sometimes some of the younger whiskeys people say wow this tastes so old and we'll reveal it and we'll say, well, that was seven years old. You know, and it's, it's really just, I think it really is the best way to taste whiskey. It's just, it's completely blind. Um, so we'll I think see. it's true. You know, I, just a, a quick point on that. Um, years ago, there was a, there was a, uh, a Brad Pitt, Robert Redford movie called Spy Game that my brother saw. And oh, I think yeah. in the movie, Redford says something like, um, single malt scotch, never less than 12 years old. And for years, my brother refused to drink anything that wasn't a 12 year old scotch, at least a 12 year old scotch. Um, and I think there is a, you know, there, there's sort of, there has been, and hopefully it's a, a gradually dissipating prejudice, but there's been a prejudice against whiskeys that aren't of a certain age. Yeah. Um, so I love these blind tests because it kind of obliterates all of your, your prejudices. All right. Well, we'll see how you're doing this one. So, <laughs> um, all right, well, let's go through. So again, these whiskeys are all coming out tomorrow, probably early afternoon. Mm -hmm. Um, you guys are amongst the first with the exception of those who are at our event right now in New York and. Uh, Jenna's hosting an event, oh, Jenna known as Whiskey Go Girl on Instagram. Um, it's funny, Instagrammers, we just go by our real names. What's your real name? <laughs> whiskey Go Girl. So it's one in LA right now. And so with the exception of those small groups, uh, you guys are amongst the first to hear about these whiskeys. 
Uh, we have, I think this month, actually, just with the recent growth of the society over the last six months, really, in the US, um, we got to this point where we were selling out of whiskey really quick, which is, on one hand, you think that's a great problem to have, but as a member's club, you know, we want people to be able to come onto our site and just call us and find the, the spirits that they want in stock. So I think we've doubled our outturn selection. Like the number of casts coming out this month um, is just, compared to just a couple of years ago, I think twice. We used to have like six to eight you know, a month. Now well, I always enjoy getting the, um, there's, a, there's a newsletter that comes through uh, via snail mail. And that's always kind of a lot of fun to uh, see what's coming out. Yeah, really, yeah. Really so I think we have about in total between this this main out turn and then our other special releases in the month, we'll have a close to twenty five different casts. Um, so we, we've chosen a few here. So this first one to start is cast number one twelve point two eight. Um, it's from you know all of these are categorized in one of our twelve flavor profiles, and that really helps when you taste blind um, to just kind of just narrow it down. So this is in what we call the sweet fruity and mellow flavor profile. Um, it's from the Highland region, actually Southern Highland. And the name of this one of cast 112.28 is called a fruity fool. So <laughs> I don't know a fruity fool. If that's a, yeah, obviously you like that name. Um, it's fantastic. Yeah, I yeah, like yeah. all the names though. Honestly, I think the names are really imaginative. Yeah. So a fruity fool, 15 years old, uh, in a first fill American oak Um So there you go. 15 years it succeeded your 12 year benchmark from Spy Game. 52.4%. Uh, obviously, all these are cast strength. Um, I'm still filtered, naturally colored, but a fruity fool cast 112.28. You want to, why don't you, I mean, these are just totally, I've, I've tasted these, I think, very briefly last week, but this is really my first time spending any amount of time with these whiskeys. What do you think initially? Oh, wow. So, um, then my first thought is uh, right off the bat, there's definitely some of that sort of springy, heathery Highland stuff that I really love. But of course, at the at the cast rank, you also get a lot of that, and it's not too much. There's not too much intensity on the back, but there's just enough to know um, exactly what it is that you're drinking. This is lovely. Uh, I'm getting some wheat grass, lemon grass. Um, yeah, it's very, sorry, I mean, it's a little, little faint of uh, a pipe tobacco actually sort of in the back, but uh, yeah, this is quite this is quite nice. Yeah, the fruity the fruity nature. It's it's funny. Like when you think of we've talked about this in the past and. Uh, one of our live tastings a couple months ago. But like, there's a fundamental difference between space side. Oh, the regions of Scotland, I think, are all, there's some, the, the lines have been blurred in time, but there's, in my opinion, like a classic space side fruitiness, which is like orchard fruit, apples, pears, mm -hmm. honey, vanilla. Like, it's all that, you know, orchard fruit drizzle and honey. But this is like a very fruity whiskey, but total, like, like you nailed it, I think. Brassy. It's a, it's a classic. It's a true Highland, if you will. Oh, absolutely. Brassy. Yeah. Yeah, this is a, this is a real treat. Uh, what to start it off? N nicely done. Fifteen years, yeah. So, <laughs> I think I think it's quite good. Um, a little info on this: it's priced at just for for those who are, are members and interested, it's priced at one twenty. So actually, pretty good for a fifteen year oh. fruity fool Highland whiskey. Well, I mean, our, once we agreed to do this, I was already thinking about the. Um, the whiskeys I wanted to try to check out when I was there, because uh, it's so much nicer to try them out and bring a whole bottle from the vaults or from Queen Street than yeah. uh, getting in the mail. Although the mail is fine too. Yeah, this is great. Yeah, um, it's funny. Go ahead. Uh, no, no, I'm, just, I'm wondering how you how you sort of chose the order of these. Well, I, I think I chose um, a couple things when you look at the, like, the bottles that we have here. They all have a line that go down the, the middle here. We have different color codings for the different profiles, but then we have lines and the lines will actually, let's bring it out here. Here's a fruity fool. You'll see the line. And is this inverted for you? Or is this the, like, is this backwards? So, uh, to me, uh, it's, uh, it looks like where you'd be sitting traditionally in the office. So um, okay. I assume that what, you're, what I'm saying is correct. But... Well, I mean, but can you can read this? Like, Oh yeah, no, I can, yeah, yeah I can slipper, slipper. That's okay. <laughs> oh, we're cutting ahead. Um, but this one, you can see the line here moves from left to the right along mm -hmm. the label. And that really suggests the tasting order. The simple fact that when you do a taste, you want to saturate your palate um, in a way that does not take away from the next whiskey. So I thought, hey, this is 15 years. It's a bit light. It's a very elegant. It is fruity. But as we move down the line here. Um, what fruit are you getting mostly out of it, Ben? I get like uh, this one. Like this what's one. That? 
like this odd like raspberry note. Like it's a totally, it's, it's a red berry, but it's very fresh. That's not something I get often with whiskey. Yeah, I was thinking, I was thinking that there's sort of a, almost a very compote um, sort of aspect to it, which is, is really nice. It's a very light, um, and I usually hate the word light, but in this one, it kind of, it kind of feds even for a cast strength. Yeah. Jason Coates, good to see you. Sorry, I just want to catch up on the comments. Jason and I got to meet, a lot of these guys actually were down at the Scotch Test Dummies anniversary party uh, last month. So good to see you, Jason. Oh, Jesse as well. Jesse is a new member as of just a few weeks ago uh, from Carolina. And uh, yeah, good group tonight. Sorry, guys, I've been kind of having a moment with this whiskey here. <laughs> um, yes, uh, Whiskey Throttle says, I only brought back one live cast bottling. Oh, from the so yeah, at the, at the at the vaults uh, in Edinburgh, you have the live cast, and actually now they're up to two, so you can bottle a, a mini. Like I think it's a twenty CL bottle uh, from a cask that's a living cask, if you will. So technically, every day it's maturing and evolving. Uh, it's a really cool aspect to it. Um, my brother and I thought about it when we were there about uh, bringing some uh, home some of our own bottles of it, um, but in the end, we opted for some different stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah. No. So, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set this one down and move on. Are you ready to move on? Yeah, ready to move on for sure. Tom says, Ben, will I see you at you at a whiskey event this Thursday? Oh, you're talking about, unfortunately, I can't make it uh, this Thursday, Tom. I was hoping to. I know, I think we talked about it initially, but um, Matt, just for record, Matt is also in Chicago. Tom is in Chicago. So oh, hey, Tom. Matt is also in Chicago. I didn't, we didn't mention that. So we are... Just, yeah, JT and I are both in Chicago, and Baldo's in uh, Baldo's in Los Angeles. Yeah. So, all right, let's move on. Move so on. that was one twelve point two eight of fruity fool. Next one is I kind of like the name of this one. Uh, cast number seventy point two seven. Fire and Earth. Ooh, so great one. Uh, uh, yeah. Ooh, fire Love the name of that. Uh, yeah. It's in the spicy. Yeah, it's in the spicy and dry flavor profile. It's it's a Northern Highland distillery of origin. Um, and what's interesting, 11 years old on this one, so a bit younger, but this is double matured. It spent the first uh, about nine or 10 years, mm -hmm. American oak hogshead, a refill hogshead. Oh. Then we transferred it to a second fill French oak uh, wine barrique. Oh. So, oh. Oh. <laughs> what are you owing about over there? Actually, <laughs> now I'm really, really excited to try it. Yeah, so I, I, like, I like you kicking these off, like your first impressions. Yeah, yeah. Just um, sorry. Uh, one second. Go with that. There's uh, something I had to take care of in the next room. Sorry, guys. Be right back. Les Jolly says drinking SMWS thirty point nine seven dancing on volcano. One of my favorites from this year. Um, that young nine year old. Oh, interestingly, Wes, stay tuned because the whiskey after this is the follow up to that. Believe it or not. So we won't, we won't cut to that now. But this this first one, fire and earth, finished in a French oak barrique. What do you think? Oh, so first of all, the nose on this is just extraordinary. Um, there's a little bit of, you know, I often, when I'm writing about this stuff, the whiskey, I often talk about burnt ends. I'm, gonna, I'm never really entirely sure if people know what the burnt ends are, but it's the pieces of, um, of a whole roasted hog that, that don't look extraordinary, but um, have some of the most potent flavor to the entire roasted hog. Um, I'm certainly getting some, some of the really lovely the roast, roasted pork on the, on the back. I'm not sure that would come from it because I, I have no idea. Um, it's kind of what I'm getting on the, in the front. Yeah, this is a big whiskey. This is a big oaky. It's, it's, I get a lot of char. It's oh. oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was, a, you know, I'm, I'm always a fan of the Highlands, but um, and did you give us the region for this one? This is, uh, yeah, this is a Highland distillery, yeah. uh, Northern Highland. Yeah, this is definitely my preferred profile when it comes to Highland whiskey, which is a much more oaky, more robust. Um, bit of almost like a roasted, like I said, a roasted peach. I'm getting, but uh, yeah, I get like a heavily oak, oh, like heavily fermented mm -hmm. Chardonnay, like a yeah. white wine, yeah, uh, or some wine that's like really meaty too. But it's that oak is just claws at the nostrils. I, I think. It's <laughs> Which is funny because I just yeah, <laughs> market, the nostril cline term, but um, funny because the distillery 70, this Northern Highland distillery, um, not to get too into 
excuse me, too in depth with the uh, distillery itself, but typically produces a single malt that's a bit more gentle than this. This is you know, this is an intense, uh, aggressive whiskey, not in a harsh way, but just in, a, in, in like that, that oak, that French oak, if you will, that very tannic oak. Um, you definitely get a lot of the tans in the, sort of the back end of the, of the palate, but it's not overly tanny. You suddenly get some whiskeys that, that just kind of the tannins drive all the flavor out, but not this one. This one's got basically every layer of it remains there, sort of supported by the tannins. Does that make any sense? Yeah, that makes, yeah, definitely. And this is 60.6% too, so it's pretty high in ABV. Um, yeah, yeah. But I think when you taste it, it's not as tantalizing. I mean, it's, it's definitely mouth watering, but it's not as intense as you would think it is for that ABV. I mean, on the nose, it's like, wrong. Um, so I haven't added any water to it at all. I'm curious what that's going to do to it. Have you done that as well? I'm going to add a little bit of water just because I think this is surprisingly enjoyable at cast rank of 60.6%. But I'm not going to lie. To be honest, I found that most of the society uh, whiskeys are enjoyable at cast strength. Really? Yeah. Because <laughs> you're a man. No, <laughs> I, it's funny because I have water. To just as with a beard. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was like, um, Oh, that's, that's really nice. Um, yeah, she mentioned too, so price point on this one is 110. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I'm writing all this down uh, in a notebook that I almost certainly forget before as I'm packing on uh, Thursday morning. Yeah, so oh. for everybody who's in and just now, cast 70.27, um, called Fire and Earth, quite like that name, coming out tomorrow. Uh, the question was asked earlier at what time it's coming out approximately. I, I typically, early afternoon, first thing in the afternoon, um, Eastern time, but it can vary. So we don't really announce it because uh, there's just a number of factors working. And, and it's kind of a crazy business in the sense that every month we have all this whiskey coming in, we got to release it in time. And so sometimes things come up to the wire, but everything's good to go this month. We, all, we always pull together. Um, and so and uh, asking, for, asking for a friend who may or may not be going to say the vaults Friday, um, but will these many of these whiskeys be available at the vaults or say at Queen Street or any of the locations in London, perhaps? Asking for oh, oh about these whiskeys particularly, or what's what's the question? Uh, yeah, when when so for those who are, who are not necessarily initiated, so to speak, once they're released, um, yeah, you know, once they're released, will there also be these these bottles available at say the Queen Street or the Leith? So what's interesting about the society is, you know, it, with the 20 countries right now that we operate in, every country uh, runs its own outturn. And so, I mean, all of these whiskeys are obviously bottled in Scotland, and then we every country will choose the selection every, every month. And so we'll typically do six months at a time. Um, so the whiskeys that came out, you know, the UK, for instance, or Australia are not the same whiskeys um, that we're getting here in the US. Now, there is increasing overlap, I think, for us in the UK right now, because we've grown so significantly here in this country that uh, there used to be a lag where you know whiskeys would come out in the UK and then about a year later they would make their way to, to us. But since we've kind of caught up in terms of I think demand and enthusiasm for society whiskey here in the US, um, there is some overlap. So there might be some right now that that are um, also available in the UK. Mm -hmm. There might also be some that do can taste in the UK that actually probably will come in the US within the next month or two. So you'll be you could be a little ahead of the game. <laughs> I'm not that, sure this one is. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, um, I mean, of the two so far, and obviously by the time we progressed to the six, I'm sure I'll, I've forgotten all of it, but of the two so far, I really enjoyed that one. That's um, as somebody who also drew, enjoys a really you know, a, a sort of a subtle, good bourbon that that's right up there with me um, uh, yeah. in terms of the ones that I've really enjoyed so far from the society. So Whiskey Throttle asked, should I pour the Bee's Knees 42.24 or a tantalizing tightrope C4.1, which is a cognac. Uh, I think you should do, uh, oh, I think he was at Whiskey Throttles actually asking Tom Marley question, but I think 42.24 <laughs> and then C4.1. Uh, price, Tom R asked about the 70.27. I'm sorry if you asked this before I answered, but it's $110 for this one right here, Fire and Earth, 70.27. Um, and so, yeah, so the flavor profile, this is a spicy and dry. Uh, asked Kyle, hey, Kyle, I think it's good to see you. Um, yeah, and Jesse, your question, the best way to order from the outturn, phone or online? You know, you can order online. Personally, you know, before I worked for the society, I was a member and I prefer to call in because we, we have a team and I'm, I'm now part of that team. But when you call in, 
we take notes to understand what every member, it's a really cool thing. I mean, it's a member services organization, so I really took advantage when I was a member, but I'd always call in and say, what's coming out, what's in stock? You know what I like, I like Pete, for instance, and then kind of built a relationship with the team and they would just say, oh, you know, Ben, I, I, I know what you like. We got one that's just for you, just came out. And so I do that now, it's kind of funny. And so I, I'm, I'm on the phone most of the day uh, with members who call in just asking for personal guidance. And I think ultimately that's what makes a society unique. So you can always go online, but I would always recommend just calling in, uh, talking to a human being during business hours and uh, giving some personal recs. So you want to move on? Yeah, you know? sure, sure, sure. That sounds fun. Okay. So this is, I'm sorry. What, what, are you, what are we moving on to a different region? Or are we uh, still in the house? Oh, yeah. Where are we going? So, this is so West Jolly. You were drinking cast number 30.97 Dancing on Volcano, which is a nine year space side. This is actually a follow up. This is cast 30.101 called uh, Slipper Sipper. It's a space side, um, 10 years old from a first fill Spanish oak sherry butt. Bottled at, I think, our highest of the evening 64.3% for this one. Wow. Okay. So it's, it's categorized in the deep, rich, and dried fruits flavor profile. Um, yeah, there's a lot of plum, a lot of dark plum on the on the nose right there, and you certainly get that that traditional sherry profile right off the bat. Yeah, it's lovely, um, man. <laughs> yeah, I think these this Slurry Thirty, um, this mysterious Glen is a um, becoming a favorite of mine. As of, as of late, it, it, it was something I really enjoyed a lot of 10 years ago, I would say, kind of took a little hiatus from, but through these casts from the society, I've really fallen in love with, I think some of the best casts and best values have been from this distillery. So 30.101, 10 years in a first fill Spanish oak sherry, but just a total sherry bomb. Um, nutty, spicy, a lot of dark fruit. It's a it's it's true Oloroso in, in construct. No, hundred percent. You got, uh, as I said before, you get a lot of that very sort of very rich plum, almost a almost a Christmas pudding on the nose, which involves yeah. some of the nutty flavor as well. Yeah, obviously, uh, yeah, it, it, it's, the flavor profile is mostly cast driven. That sherry oak really is is the most dominant, but I think that the distiller, the spirit itself, holds up. That fruity space side character is really beneath that sherry, and even from the nose, that oh, that is, all right, finish is still going on. Oh, that is intense. <laughs> it's like it's not any um, beautiful whiskey, beautiful whiskey overall. Yeah. Oh, and that uh, I, I, I hesitate to use the phrase mouth feel, but there is such a rich, almost loamy mouth feel that you get from this um, from this whiskey. Um, which one was this the uh, that you? Uh, yeah. So this with? is cask number uh, thirty point one oh one slipper sipper. So slipper sipper. It's funny guessing what these names mean. I mean, I feel like <laughs> sitting around by, this is such a this is cliche, cliche setting right here. Sitting around by the fire wearing slippers is the best whiskey, I suppose. That's what it came from. Uh, well, and there is so much of that sort of, that's so much of that UK holiday sort of pudding aspect to this, which is really, really nice, but rich. Um, and you can sort of imagine you on a, you know, Christmas Eve or Boxing Day, Sitting there in front of the fire, in front of you know, with your uh, with your new Christmas robe, or your your uh, Boxing Day robe on, and um, slowly sipping this, slowly sipping this. Yeah, this is here. It is so people are asking it's silver slipper. This is slipper sipper, slipper uh, sipper, slipper sipper. And did you give us the price point on that, though? Um, this one, I believe. Uh, let's see. This is actually this is also one ten. Okay, so you get two whiskeys right there. Price at one ten. The one we just did, fire and earth, and slipper sipper. Um, Let's it, you can announce your preferences at the end. How about that? <laughs> David, I, want, you I, am, I am writing them in my little handy notebook here. Uh, you're yeah. doing that? Okay. okay. Yeah, I yeah, am for sure. All right. I want to, I'd like to hear the reveal of your uh, reviews at the end. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Um, I couldn't join this. I mean, I have water. I think this will take water quite well, but I think this is I just think it it Sherry Bomb is just such a style that I enjoy as it gets colder out, too. I like it to be intense, you know. Well, it's it it is really the the kind of at least to me it's the kind of whiskey that you want around the holidays when there is so much else that complements it. Um, I'm not sure this would be 
Well, I think, I, mean, I think you could enjoy this whiskey at any point, but um, for me, this would be a great whiskey throughout the holiday season. Um, I, I so often pair my whiskeys with what I'm eating during the you know during the day, and uh, this one would be great for for your roasts, for your um, your puddings, stews, even. Yeah, yeah. Whiskey Throttle uh, is mentioning uh, said I hope for the U.S. members you can get some laws changed um, to allow exclusive liquor store partners and our partner. You no, know, yeah, it's 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 funny. Our you know, all funny, but the U.S. Uh, legal system when it comes to just the alcohol industry, it's pretty regulated, and, and you know, state by state, it, it can vary. And so, um, right now, there are a handful of bars across the country that do have our whiskey, but you know, obviously, which is in in, in a way. It's good because a lot of the whiskeys that they'll carry are things that you can't, you know, certainly can't get from the society because our whiskey comes and goes, you know, it'll come in and maybe it'll sell out with, if not within hours, within a couple months at least. And so sometimes you can go to some of these, these bars that, that carry uh, our supply and really get some vintage bottles, which is quite cool. Here in Chicago, we have two, but there are a handful around the country. Um, but yeah, but I think as we're growing, you know, we're just more uh, happening. For the Chicago fans and for anybody who happens to be visiting Chicago, uh, what are the two in Chicago that uh, where they can we're going to see some of these? So Drum Bar, uh, which is downtown, is kind of in the Gold Coast area, which is a penthouse of the Raffaello Hotel. It's really cool place. We've done some events there. Um, we did a 35th anniversary party there, and then also Fountainhead up on the north side, which is a great whiskey bar. Uh, we did an event there actually for for um, which and Tom R was there. I met Tom there. But we did that last month, I would want to say, and so. And uh, um, Fountainhead's got a shop attached to it as well, I think. Um, it's been a while. Since Fountainhead has a shop, yeah. yeah. They were and a great rooftop. Yeah. Oh, Although, a rooftop, rooftop you get to use it. Well, they have, a, they have a great rooftop and a great whiskey shop. I guess. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right, you want to move on? Let's move on. Uh, number What's four. It? Number four. So Adolfo asked, do you ship to whiskey to Texas? We do. We have a lot of members in Texas, actually. A lot in Dallas and Houston and, and Austin. Well, really everywhere in Texas. Um, so we certainly do. You ready for number four? Okay, I, I'm gonna. I have to admit before we get to this, I, I did taste it once. I've tasted all these ones, but when I first joined this company, I went from a member to being on the other side of the aisle here. Um, I looked at you know, the first day one, like what the first hour of my employment. What do you think I did? I obviously said, "Let me see all the whiskey that's coming out." <laughs> like, what do you think? Like, you know, I think, and then I did all the HR stuff. But uh, the first thing I did was just say, let me see all the whiskey, of course, then touch a whiskey key. Um, and this one caught my eye. This is, I just said, wait, this exists kind of thing. It was one of those moments where I just said, this is going to be a wild ride. So uh, this whiskey here, number the fourth dram is cast number 29.248 called. 29.248. Yeah, 29.248 called Creaking Ships Lost in the Fog. Oh. Um, 21 year old Isla whiskey, this uh, bubble at 49.8%. And so this is also double matured. This spent 20 years in American Oak ex bourbon hogshead and then was transferred to a second fill charred red wine barrique. So, like that fire and earth, the 70.27, the second one of the night that was also spent the final year in a French oak barrique. This is a recharred red wine barrique on top of a, what was at the time a 20 year old old stately oily and coastal Isla whiskey. Um, from Distillery 29. Not saying anything, but yeah. I'm just going to sit back for a moment, <laughs> take a break, because I need one. I'll let you do the talking here. So, so when, when Ben talks about the. the no, here my computer, which is unfortunate. But when Ben talks about the. Sort of take this right away. Are you getting reverb as well? Uh, um, for a moment, but I think it's over. Yeah, I got reverb for a second. When Ben talks, there's reverb. When you talk about it, something that really um, takes you back and makes you think, uh, that automatically gets my attention because I've seen you, um, I've seen you sort of drink some whiskeys that are to me just explosive, but to you, it's like hmm. this one. However, I can tell why it knocks you out. Well, okay. There's so much brine um, and so much lovely brine on this one as well. Um, and you know, Isla is my. That's that's where I. That's kind of how I came of age with whiskey. Um, so yeah, you get a lot of that sort of almost really salty sea cream on the nose, which I adore. Yeah, I mean, I think um, just to like clarify any 
perception of snobbery on my part. <laughs> just kidding. Not at all. That's not what I meant. Uh, no, I know. I know. I'm just giving you. A, I'm just giving you a hard time, but I'm giving myself a hard time, really. Um, you know, there's. I'm really fortunate within society to, to obviously be around some people, and um, not a day goes by where I don't. Or, you know, I don't think about that. But the reality is, you know, regardless of, of price or rarity of these casts, like there's nothing like finding one that just speaks to you. And that's the whole thing. It's like every whiskey by, again, by construct is a really good whiskey. I mean, we're so selective in, you know, these blind tastings, what we choose to actually bottle and, and feel that it are ready to be bottled. It's such a small percentage of the thousands of whiskeys that we have in our, we have about 10,000 right now in, in our warehouse. And so, you know, relatively speaking, what we're putting out is a lot of whiskeys, but it's actually very, very selective. Um, so everything's good, but there's nothing like finding something that just clicks with you at the right place in the right time. And so I had you know, high expectations for this one, but I was, quite frankly, a little, not, not, I should say worried. I was worried that this, this wine cask would take away from the true island nature of this, an old whiskey that I think, you know, in, in general, when, when an island peated whiskey like this is, is matured for over two decades, it can become sometimes too mellow for my taste, just personally. But this one, I feel like has retained a lot of that true Isla essence um, with just a hint of that French oak. That, that red wine is so subtle, which I think is just, yeah. Yeah, there's a, there's a really nice, I'm, a, uh, I'm not sure if I would call it a, I, I can never fully pronounce the word, but uh, sort of a claret, claret, um, aspect to it, a very t slight touch of maybe a burgundy. Um, but what I'm really getting is that sort of classic Isla profile um, that is exactly what you want at night when the winds are ripping down the doors and ripping out the windows out of your house. Um, as I said before, some sea bream is, is absolutely on the on the palate and it's, uh, yeah, it's, 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 I would say, you get, what other you guys have done to, to combine the two? You've, you've done it really well. Yeah, I would say, um, Jesse was asking about what's the, you know, the, the time due to the, to the peat. Um, what's the age of the peat is a question. Um, it melts it out a bit on the nose. The nose is a very, you know, it's funny, we've, we've categorized this actually as an oil and coastal whiskey. Mm -hmm. And the oh, categories yeah. are based on the flavor experience. And so it's actually not, a, a peated, not even a light, we have a lightly peated, a peated and a heavily peated category, three peated categories. This actually falls behind, it's in the oily and coastal. But on the palate, you definitely pick up that smoke. It's really there, but on the nose, it's, it's a bit muted. It but is. Unmistakably Isla, you know, I, oh, so good. Right. So, yeah, I think unmistakably Isla is the uh, sort of a takeaway from this one. Um, in yeah. addition to um, uh, just being a really, really kind of terrific whiskey, um, so far at least. Uh, it's a big whiskey. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, I, I don't like to use the word robust when it comes to the to the island malts, but um, this one's it's a strong it's a strong island despite the uh, sort of the wine influence. It's always sort of there. Yeah, Eric Wake's in the house. Hello from California. Hey, Eric, how you doing? Um, doing our own version of Whiskey Church over here. That so that was cast twenty nine point two four eight Oiling Coastal. Um, Creaking ships lost. lost at sea. Was that what it was? Creaking, creaking ships lost in the fog. Yeah, lost in the fog. My handwriting is atrocious. Um, uh, one of these uh, fancy black label with the copper emblem models. Um, and so what was the uh, what was the price on that then? This one's two sixty five. Mm -hmm. So you know a bit higher than the other ones, but I think for what it is, it's it's special whiskey. Um, ready to move on? Ready to move on. Uh, the, All right. uh, mystery whiskey is taunting me. I'm so curious. About <laughs> that. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. You guys, everyone <laughs> tuning in. We're, we're about to do the fifth um, of the evening. And then the sixth one is a mystery. I haven't told Matt what it is, and he's good. already guess it. So, number five, though, we're, we're moving now into a, the lightly peated category. Um, again, this of the three peated categories that we have the lightly peated, the peated, and the heavily peated. Um, which sometimes the, the boundaries seem a little blurred between what's peated and heavily peated, but this is a lightly peated. It's actually a, it's a mainland peat. It's an, uh, an Eastern Highland distillery, uh, distillery 66. This is cast number uh, 66.122 called Never Ending Lazy Lunch. Um, 
it reminds me of something that like Jake on the rocks would would uh would enjoy. But uh, twelve years old in a refill hogshead. So just a, a, a kind of a classic maturity of twelve years in a, in a classic refill hogshead, um, lightly peated mainland mainland you know whiskey, about fifty eight point two percent. So straight away. Mm. There's an oil to the nose that I, I enjoy. Um, I got that too. Right away. Yeah. yeah, almost immediately, actually. Yeah. Yeah, it's oily. I mean, I mean, it's it's it is lightly peated. I mean, the smoke is is just there. It's, it's like more of like just like a cracked pepper for me. I'm getting some pepper for sure. There's a. I'm trying to say there's any fennel to it. I, I keep getting whiffs of fennel, but it, it might. Uh, managing, but I, I feel like I'm getting a bunch of fennel here. Well, I think the reality is there is no actual fennel, or or there's no pepper, or or creaking chips lost in the fog. Like it's just it's malted barley and oak. But uh, if you get fennel, Matt, you get fennel. You know, I, I believe you. Um, I mean, that's, that's one of the things I, I really enjoy about uh, this entire process is you can get so much out of any single glass. Um, and for me lately fennel's been it's a fall whiskey um this one i think certainly falls in that realm so i'm already prone to be trying fennel um and, and sort of experiencing fennel and uh, there's a lot of that at least for me on the, on the splashes yeah so um this smws only sell at 750 milliliter bottles we do yes oh Question's been answered. In, in Europe, it's all 700 mill, milliliter or 70 cl. Um, 750 is the U.S. standard. Um, zero page X, another from 66. Let me finish off my bacon buddy. That's funny. That that was, yeah, from Distillery 66. That's uh, when we did uh, the tasting with Jake Romero, Jake on the Rocks. He was on the show actually. Uh, he loved that one. And so, never ending lazy lunch is this one. Very sweet. I, I think it's a sweet peat for me. Yeah. And then a lot of like like vanilla cake icing on the oh, palate. Sure. It's a great way to describe it. So um, you, yeah, that's what I got. So I'm not sure how many folks have have been, you know, to the UK have been in Scotland. Um, ben, when you were there, did you try any of the going to any of the sweet shops where you get these sort of custards, um, these like sort of pastries? I, did, I was mostly in distilleries and pubs, and uh, <laughs> about two hours <laughs> in my hotel bed. And yeah. then back to business. <laughs> As I understand, at least from my from what I've seen, there's a there's a, a sweet shop experience that you can get. Um, and I know years ago Glen Mo did a really nice whiskey based on the sweet shop experience. But that's also kind of what I'm getting at these sort of lovely custard puffs. They're almost made around Easter time, I think. But I'm getting a lot of that. Um, there's a lot of sort of kind of lovely. Um, bread, like a bready feeling to this one that I haven't gotten with the other ones. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so for Cast 66.122, never ending lazy lunch. Uh, just again, it's 12 years from a refill hogshead, 58.2%. Uh, price at 115. So, oh. it's, yeah, so it's a really good introductory um, peated whiskey. I mean, introductory in the sense that if you're kind of on the fence about peat, it's a really good bridge into that greater world of peated whiskey. Um, obviously, a cast strength. You know, anything is to be intensified, but um, I think it's really approachable. A cast strength. You know, um, I haven't had water to it yet. But I'm gonna add a drop right now. Yeah. So, have you added the water to it before now? This is my first time right now. I'm gonna give it a go. Um, it's like a, there's a nice little salinity to it. It's a bit salty. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Almost a, yeah. a, a not unpleasant medicinal salinity to it, I think. Yeah. So malty, and it brings up this nice like citrus peel. It's just on like just a hint of it. Uh, really, really, really great mask. Yeah, there's a really nice sort of um, orange cream at the end uh, once you've added the water to it, which is which is quite nice. Other than whiskey, uh, the only local cuisine I had in Scotland was Haggis and Iron Brew, says Eric Waite. That sounds about right. Um, so, um, yeah. Eric, if you can if you can let us know, wh where did you have the Haggis? Um, I have some preferred Haggis joints when I'm over there, but I'm, I'm curious where you had. 
Yeah, tell us, Eric. The, I don't, I, this is a guilty confession. When I was in Scotland you know, last month or two months ago, um, I had this affinity and I never, like when I first landed that, I was really hungry and eat on the plane because I learned that if you, if you don't eat on the plane, you know, obviously it takes more energy to digest at higher altitudes. And so like, it's a good way to um, combat jet lag is not to not eat or drink on a plane. Yeah. I, I just, so I didn't do that, but I was starving. I landed and I went to the little like uh, quick shop at the uh, Edinburgh airport. I got a prawn sandwich, which is just prawns or what we call shrimp uh, with mayonnaise on wheat bread. And I literally had one every single day. Uh-huh. I just became addicted to prawn sandwiches. And a lot of people think it's, it's disgusting and it sounds disgusting, but that's my jam. So I'm going to, I'm going to chip in real quick on that. Um, I started going to Edinburgh 20 years ago and it'll actually be 20 years ago this month. And people make fun of me for it all the time, but those sandwiches, the prawn sandwiches, the cheddar and chutney mm-hmm. and onion sandwiches, they're unbelievably good. And all I, know. I, all I want is those sandwiches like every day in my belly. That's all okay, I want. good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love that. They're so good. I was on a, like in the car on the road and just driving, just quick distillery to distillery, just jam packed schedule. And so I was always eating on the go, and those prawn sandwiches just fueled so, me up. So good. <laughs> All right. Are you, uh, it'll be gross, but I'll bring you one back. Um, that be, sounds really gross, but I would do it if you can get like a freezer. <laughs> right. I gotta make my own. Uh, anyway, let, let's go to the last one. Are you ready to do this? I mean, we've. we've yeah, yeah. All right. Give me a second. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll splash the water here. Drink some water. Drink some water because we just had some peats. Um, I'll just I'll, I'll spoiler alert: this one is not peated, so we kind of have to go back. Um, I need to secretly pour myself a dram of this. So, for those of you guys who have just tuned in recently, just let me know. So we did five of the whiskeys, and now we're about to do a six. And I'm not going to announce what this is. I want to just see if Matt can <laughs> pick it out. So just tell me. What, I mean. Just t- try to figure out as much as you can about this one and tell me what you think in terms of, and look, I don't think you're going to guess it, so. <laughs> I don't think I am either. Um, ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Um, this. So I, I'm not sure if you can actually see what I'm having here. It's a very. Well, you got a glass. It's an official glass. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's it's my official glass. I was saving it for the last one. Um, so it's a very dark, it's a very lovely color, um, but it's one that I tend to think of as having a really powerful nose. And I'm maybe it's just that I'm in the wrong room for it, but... <clears throat> okay. Okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> so there's a, there's a bit of cake on the nose. I know I'm not. I'm not. I'm not as you might think. Um, stalling as much as I am. It's the most humbling. It's the most blind tasting is the most humbling thing. Like you can just. Oh no! I'm I'm utterly terrified. Um, but yeah, there's a bit of cake on the nose. Almost a carrot cake on the nose, which I don't usually get from a whiskey. What type of cask would you say it is? Sorry. What type of cask would you would you guess this is? I mean, I, I mean, any idea or. I mean, I'm not getting a whole ton of sherry on this one. Yeah, very dark, but not sherry. Okay. Right. Um, having just been in Portugal, perhaps my flavor profile is veering towards that, but I'm getting a touch of port on this one. Mm-hmm. I see Ben grinning towards the ground, so I think I'm wrong already. <laughs> the bottle under the table right here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what about age? What do you think about age? Would you say? Oh wow, that's really interesting. So I'm gonna be rude. I mean, right up front, I have zero clue. I don't think I've ever tasted whiskey quite like this one. Um, on the nose, there was port, uh, but I'm not sure you're getting a whole ton of port. Period on the on the palate itself. Um, I'm not even sure. I mean, I might go some sort of weird, if it even existed, sort of a weird Highland, like a sort of Orkney uh, Highland blend, but uh, that's that's not a thing that exists as yeah, far as I know. It is a single cask, so. Hmm. 
Uh, old, young, what do you think? Um, I would say it's fairly old. Okay. Yeah, my my uh, it, it it reminds me a bit of some of the and I you know to be frank, I haven't had that many particularly old whiskeys, but the old whiskeys I've had have all been my father in law's house and they've all been in the twenty five to thirty year old range. Um that's kind of what I'm getting here is a uh, somewhere in maybe late mid twenties, early twenties. Okay. Yeah. So uh, how how long do I get to embarrass myself with this before? Yeah, let's 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 let's, let's end this. Uh, yeah. I, I'd say you did pretty good, um, given the circumstances. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah. So this is. <laughs> I feel so bad about this. <laughs> um, you guessed uh, an early 20s to mid 20s funky, weird. Is it a cognac? It's not a cognac, no. Because I want to say, if you screw me with a cognac, I'm really sad. But it is an Armagnac. Boom. Oh, look at that. Pass number A5.1, Fruit Shop Raid, a 1989 Armagnac. Um, we have quite a few Armagnacs now, and this one was just released actually a couple weeks ago, I want to say. <laughs> so this is a, you know, pristine 29, almost 30 year old Armagnac, Bass Armagnac. It's uh, great. Um, oh my I God, it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, so first of all, I, I don't really, you know, I, I never really drank Armagnac. I've had a few here and there, but man, it's good. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing. Like it's not... I only tasted a few whiskeys. I haven't been drinking a lot, but like it's so funny because I've been like I love whiskey. And whiskey has my heart, always will. But like this Armagnac, in so many of these Armagnacs, because really, can you experience Armagnac at full cast strength? I mean, this is almost thirty years old, um, sixty-one point three percent. Like this, this is a full single cast, just like the whiskeys um, called Fruit Shop Raid. Yeah, a five, a five point one. Um, so, I mean, I know that was an impossible task for you to guess what this was. <laughs> I, I kept saying, like, not whiskey. I, I, I didn't want to say, like, the six whiskey. I just kept saying that the six one is going to be <laughs> something different. No, I, I, I should have been picking up on the fact that you were actually continually did not refer to it as a whiskey, um, yeah. even when we met earlier to talk about it. Um, but it's it's lovely, and it's... And it, also, to be frank, it's one of the things that I really like about this society is that you get things like this Armagnac, you get drinks like this that that they will sort of expose you to. Um, that's one of the great things that I enjoy about the society is that uh, it broadens your palate. Yeah, I think I wanted to do it in this format because when you have taste a bunch of whiskeys, you taste this. Armagnac to me, like I, I, I first had Armagnac probably five years ago, um, not too long ago, but you know, I, I, I always gravitated towards Armagnac first. So, if you guys don't know, Armagnac is a type of brandy from France. The Armagnac region is just but just south, pretty much, of, of uh, Cognac. Um, another type of brandy is made in Cognac. And what I like about Armagnac, first of all, is everything about it is, 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 I think, fundamentally different. I mean, there's some similarities, both being a brandy. But Armagnac is, uh, it goes through a single distillation process. And for the most part, they have these, these vineyards. And they will mo they have a mobile still that will go from vineyard to vineyard. Um, like on a cart, literally, and just do a single distillation. So with a single distillation, it's it's a very rustic spirit. I mean, the whole production process process is very rustic, but it retains a lot of this characteristic. And in my opinion, it is more whiskey-like than cognac, where I feel like cognac is a bit lighter and elegant in period appearance. Um, I want to do this one because, like, it can be mistake for, mistaken for a whiskey, um, just given its its really intense flavor. Um, and also, I think Armagnac right now, and I, I feel like this very well could change. I feel like in a couple of years from now, we might be sitting here laughing the fact that we had this 1989 Armagnac and it was priced pretty reasonably. But because Armagnac's not as, as well known and, and, and produced by these big commercial brands, such as Cognac, the price point is, is so much lower um, because you're not paying for that markup. So I, I'm a big fan of Armagnac. And and, and what was the price point of that? I, I think I missed that on the... Uh, this is um, this is two seventy five. So oh, wow. not an inexpensive bottle by any means, 
No, but for um, Army Knife, it's, it's uh, for, yeah, for 1989, it's 61.3%. Mind you, most Army Knife, you know, you'll get this shop, uh, commercial bottlings are closer to 40% ABV, 40 to 43. So it's a, it's a rare chance to taste something. Uh, we have quite a few Army Knives right now of, of different vintages. So, so I'm going to basically take Ben's approach, and when my brother and I show up in, in Edinburgh uh, on, uh, on Friday, I'm going to see if you can figure out which one I'm giving him. Uh, I'll go through a couple ranges, but then we'll get to the army knock eventually, and I'll say, hey, what do you think? And then uh, then I'll get to enjoy what you did early on. <laughs> Just <laughs> make a bull, yeah. Sorry, I, you, you, were, you did great. Um, yeah, I think, for, you know, listen, nine out of 10 times, I'll drink a whiskey, maybe 99 out of 100 times, and maybe more like nine out of 10. But um, I've been enjoying these spirits just because I have access to them and, and the ramens, for instance, I love, but I think fundamentally under taking some time and I think a lot of whiskey drinkers and I was once this as well, we get in this habit of, you know, whiskey or bus kind of thing. Oh yeah, um, for sure. But my exposure, limited exposure, if you will, to these other spirits such as Armagnac and rums has actually heightened my understanding of, of malt whiskey. Um, and it's just, it's, it's put things in a perspective. And so I enjoy whiskey for new reasons. And I did, I look for things and I appreciate it for differently, um, having become more familiar with other spirits. So I think it's a great, like a bottle of Armagnac is always something great. And I think I find myself yeah. wanting one, you know, maybe 10% of the time. And isn't it, I mean, and I'm not sure if this is where we're going to more or less leave it off, but it occurs to me that there's, Whiskey, as opposed to almost any other spirit that I can think of, is so much of an education. You, you learn, you absorb, and the whiskey itself absorbs so many different things from its from the from the components, right? So, as whiskey fans, as whiskey drinkers, we learn more about um, uh, other kinds of whiskey than I think you would if you were, say, just a, a vodka drinker, which I am, or a beer drinker, which I am. Um, but whiskey, to me, it seems to envelop so many different um, different aspects of, of, of the spirits that it's it's a really educational thing as well, which I know is not a selling point necessarily, but for me, it really is. Billy Destro says, uh, yes, Armagnac, and then you're messed up, Ben. <laughs> that was mean. <laughs> that was mean and funny. <laughs> yeah. uh, greed. Agreed. It was mean and funny, but I was proving a point that Armagnac, if you like whiskey, you can like Armagnac too. And um, I guarantee you, the next time that Ben and I hang out, I would give him a Malort that he's never had before. <laughs> wait, wait, are you doing the Malort, like, like the spring bake moment? Oh, yeah. When I walked with the, uh, our friend Jason, who's the, uh, the one Matt's compatriot with Access to Whiskey, he had a tasting, a, a group, I mean, a, a group gathering, a bunch of Chicago friends, whiskey drinkers. And so, uh, I walked in um, kind of late with uh, my friend Raquel, who's the Raquel Reyes, who's the U.S. ambassador for McAllen. And we walked in and brought all this McAllen, and uh, and then I was handed this glass and, and said, "Here you go. Here's a spring bank." Um, and I was like, "This." Now I was trying to be polite. I was like, "This." <laughs> like, this, this spring bank sucks. Like I was like, "Wow, I didn't. I did not like spring bank at all." But then, I, then I really got. I was nosing this thing. I'm like, wow, this is, and I'm like, just. I felt so bad. I was late and saying hi to everybody and I'm like this spring bank is wow really herbal and uh floral and Raquel was you know like so like proper about it she was, like, it was so floral I was like Raquel this sucks you know like what anyway it wasn't spring bank it was Malort and if you guys know Malort it's a Chicago staple uh just the worst spirit in the world in my opinion <laughs> basically <laughs> when 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 Chicago when and Chicago gets to refuel their car they are there. if there's no gas there's no gas in. Yeah. So anyway, that was mean and funny. So what <laughs> I did you was actually delightful and it was. pleasurable. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So a five point one uh, fruit shop raid, very okay. fruity old Armagnac from Gascon Black Oak is the cast type. Uh, actually, this is from the Colombard grape. Um, I don't know my Uni Blanc, but here it'll specify on these bottles here: cask region and grape. This says Colombard. On it, um, but Eric is a sommelier here, so you can chime in. Sometimes these, these labels can be limiting, but anyway, yes, Billy F. Mallard, I had that trash. I agree. I'm not a big fan personally. Not to be snobbish about it, it's just not a very enjoyable spirit. It's not. It's a, it's a terrible spirit, but it's yes. it's Chicago through and through. So yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, that wraps it up. 
So do you want to kind of share your thoughts of, of all the casts we've tasted? and, and Yeah, so um, although I enjoyed very much the Armagnac, I'm going to exclude that from, from the ranking. But uh, And I, I hate to rank anything. I would say that my, my favorite of the group that we had, um, it kind of hits my profile. I, I enjoy the sherry, the sherry bombs a lot. Uh, and I'm always looking for a, a whiskey that is extraordinarily good value. Um, and I thought that slipper sipper was just great. That was you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was, that was my favorite of the night. That was just fantastic. So I'll be looking elsewhere and, and maybe I'll just go on online and order it tomorrow. I really enjoy that one. Yeah. 30.101 slipper sipper is the true, uh, cherry bomb from the cellar 30. Um, first fill Spanish oak sherry, butt. Bottle at 64.3%. So highest ABV of the night. Um, yeah, is that right? That was right. Yeah, the second highest was highest the, the yeah, um, price at 110. So for West Jolly, you were talking about 30.97, which is somewhere around here. Um, 30.97 Dancing of Volcano, nine years old, one year older, same cast type. Oh. First fill Spanish oak cherry, but this was 64.7% West. This is 64.3. So uh, yeah, so I wonder that, that that may call for another tasting. Just wait a second. Time. Wait a second. I'm sorry to interrupt. Both of these whiskeys, Wes, if you're still with us, were distilled on the sixth of June, two thousand seven. So the Ooh. same run. These casts were actually likely acquired from this space I distillery. Um, both filled, both filled on the same day. So this yeah. is literally identical casks, but uh, one is a year older. That's interesting. We see that we see that once in a while, but that's kind of funny how that happened. Yeah, the uh, I, I can't wait to try the other one. Yeah, hint, hint, um, hint, hint. All right, guys. Well, thanks for everybody who, who tuned in again. Um, these whiskeys will all be released tomorrow. Give us a call or uh, shoot me an email. My email is ben at smwsa.com. Um, also, I'm also on Instagram at single malt alliance. Uh, Matt, how can people find you if, if they want to? Uh, they can find us at access of whiskey uh, at gmail.com. You can find us at access of whiskey on Instagram, access of whiskey at Facebook. And if you want to go to Twitter and brave that horrible place, uh, we're there as well. It's yeah. all access of whiskey. Access of whiskey. So, Matt, thanks for thanks for joining hey. us. It was awesome having you. Uh, really bring, yeah, it's really bring the level of experience and knowledge to this conversation. I think is always always just great to have. So. Uh, Still talk about whiskey with you, man. Yeah, yeah. Cheers, cheers yeah. to that. Well, let's meet up in, in real life. Like we're only probably a couple miles, well, a few miles away now, but from each other. But uh, anyway, yeah. Billy, whiskey in the six. Good to see you, Rob, uh, Mark, Scotchy and Poetic, Eric, West, Whiskey Throttle, Tamar, everybody. Uh, just whiskey Good, title. Guys. Thanks for tuning in, you guys. Uh, let us know if you have any questions about these whiskeys or Armagnacs, I should say. And uh, we'll catch you later. All right. Scotch it, you Scotch gods. <laughs> Launch <laughs> Dummies.